There's been a call that at 10 o'clock the country might observe a moment's silence for those killed yesterday in Reading and for those injured. So we pause and we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come to celebrate two extraordinary saints, two martyrs, men whose commitment to the faith and to the truth meant that they willingly gave their lives in order that they may have that life with the Lord. We begin this Mass we recognize that each of us faces a daily challenge to live out our faith. We pray that we may be made strong by this celebration of the Eucharist. We pray that we may know that law, that gift of the Lord's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray, particularly for the well-being of Annabel Burby, for whom this Mass is offered. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression, graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. My dear people, you must not think it unaccountable that you should be tested by fire. There is nothing extraordinary in what has happened to you. If you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad, because you will enjoy a much greater gladness when his glory is revealed. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ because it means that you have the spirit of glory, the spirit of God resting on you. None of you should ever deserve to suffer for being a murderer, a thief, a criminal or an informer. But if any one of you should suffer being a Christian, then he should not be ashamed of it. He should thank God that he has been called one. 
the time has come for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if what we know now is only the beginning, what will it be when it comes down to those who refuse to believe God's good news? If it is hard for a good man to be saved, what will happen to the wicked and to sinners? So even those whom God allows to suffer must trust themselves to the constancy of the Creator and to go on doing good. The Word of the Lord. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The heathens themselves said, What marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we are glad. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaths. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. It is not peace that I have come to bring, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. Anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take his cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. In his excellent homily yesterday, Deacon Thomas was reflecting on the gospel when our Lord invites his disciples to have courage in their witness. Deacon Thomas spoke about his own experiences, particularly picking on the example where he was talking to someone in a cycle shop and struggling to find the courage to talk about his faith and his vocation. A struggle which he overcame which turned out to be a very positive experience both for him and for the person to whom he was speaking. A number of emails received since have revealed that this is a common experience, a common challenge which each of us faces. 
And it's therefore appropriate to reflect on this next day in the light of today's feast of St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More. And I wanted, rather than look at the great challenge, as it were, that they faced at the end of their lives, to focus first on the daily challenges that led them to that moment. It's clear that throughout their lives they had found courage in those daily challenges, those daily moments when they were asked to, to be people of faith and of integrity. Bishop Fisher was noted as being an outstanding pastoral bishop. He worked in one of the poorest of the dioceses in this country. He worked daily for the poor. And he worked too, um, wrote about uh, a correction of the errors and a challenge to the corruption which he found challenging the church. He could have taken any day the path of least resistance as many others did but he had that belief in his vocation and in his ministry it was that concern for the truth that was to lead him to a conflict with the king who had uh, construed himself as the supreme head of the church in England something to which Bishop Fisher alone among the bishops was unable to, to accept he was charged with treason and executed on this day in 1535, a month after he'd been made cardinal by the Pope. The challenge for Thomas More was in many ways a deeply personal one, as he was a friend of the king. He too had made a name for himself as a man of great integrity and a seeker of the truth. His reputation uh, as a lawyer um, was outstanding, as many lawyers and judges of the day had given way to the various temptations. Perhaps given his integrity and his friendship with the king, it was natural that he should be made Lord Chancellor of England. And it was the same integrity that led him to that position that led him to resign from the post when King Henry required a divorce from Catherine of Aragon and Thomas More remained silent on the matter. His silence was eloquent and it came to be required of him that he ended by signing an oath of support to the act of succession and like John Fisher and for the same reasons he refused. And his execution uh, came a fortnight later on July the 6th. What makes both these men such powerful witnesses is the integrity and the dignity they maintained. Indeed, the dignity to the end, both refusing to judge others who'd taken a different path, both praying simply that their own actions would allow them to live with the Lord. Each of them overcoming any temptation to quietly find a way to accommodate, as it were, their faith and the requirement of the King. For Thomas More, particularly painful as his own family wished that he would find another way. I'd recommend the letter that he wrote to his daughter Meg, something you might Google and reflect on this day as it brings that context of the choosing of that gospel, that sense that father and daughter will find themselves in conflict over the choices that need to be made. Thank God, literally, you and I are unlikely to be ever to be put in the position they were of facing a charge of treason, but... The decisions that we take this day, the seemingly small actions, the courage to witness to our faith in the cycle shop or to tell the truth when it may be uncomfortable, to make a decision based on integrity rather than on expediency, all these will prepare us, 
All these things will form us day by day as they formed John Fisher and Thomas More. And if we choose wisely, faithfully, courageously, these daily choices will, please God, prepare us for that moment when, to quote St. Thomas More, we may yet hereafter in heaven merrily all meet together to everlasting salvation. So we pray, we pray for Pope Francis, for Bishop Richard, and for all who call us to that integrity of faith that we might witness in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that the God of light may inspire leaders of governments to uphold religious freedom and to care for the well-being of all people, especially the poor and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for Christians throughout the world who are persecuted for the faith. May they be freed from fear and anxiety and strengthened in their courageous witness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our schools, for St. Peter's, St. Joseph's, St. Thomas, and our prep school. We pray too for our own CYF team, giving thanks for all who nurture the faith in the next generation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those killed and injured in Reading, remembering too their families and friends who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Patrick Duffy, whose funeral is tomorrow, for all those who've died recently, and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We ask Mary to join with us in prayer as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring on the feast of the holy martyrs, St. John Fisher and Thomas More and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Fisher and Thomas More, with St. Edward, St. Pius, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renew us, Lord, we pray, with this food from heaven, and strengthen us by the example and prayers of your martyrs, St. John Fisher and Thomas More, so that, always following the voice of conscience, we may ever be your good servants, through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of things to mention. This afternoon, between 2 and 4, this church, St. Joseph's, uh, will be open for private individual prayer. May I reassure you that though you can't see it from, from above, because we tried to do it discreetly and keep this as a place of prayer, um, there are throughout the church uh, ropes and signs and guides and designated places in order that people may feel safe when they come that everything is being done to, to keep it uh, as clean and as safely distanced uh, as possible. So between two and four this afternoon, you're invited. Uh, the, there are guidelines as to how we should behave while we're in the church. As I mentioned before, they're summed up by what your mother used to tell you. Uh, make sure you go to the toilet before you come out. Uh, they are locked here in the church. Uh, wash your hands and please don't touch anything. At six o'clock, there will be evening prayer. Uh, if there are any petitions which you would like included, please do email them to the office, office at cpg.church. If you could send them before four o'clock, 4.30, that would be very helpful uh, to make sure that they are included in the list. Reminder that at 7 p.m. this evening, uh, there is the rosary being prayed together. It's a beautiful experience of pray, praying the rosary. If you've not tried it before, a very gentle way uh, of beginning. Uh, the Zoom link for that is on the website. And then finally, I know that Patrick Duffy uh, has been very much in the thoughts and prayers of the whole community, uh, a man who had many connections and who gave many years of service. His funeral mass tomorrow will be at 10 a.m., Apologies, there was a misprint in the email which claimed it was later in the day. It's 10 a.m. If you could use whatever grapevines you're part of, uh, whatever networks, to try and make sure that everyone has heard that, we'd be very grateful. I wish you a very happy and holy feast, and the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.